hey guys welcome to my channel uh, thank you guys for clicking on this video and viewing it today my name is Candice and I am here to talk about today some plant things about how I got into plants what inspired me my biggest mistakes that I'm making and things that I am still learning from these are common things that people would want to know about so I'm deciding to share that with you all today so thank you again so much for clicking on my video please make sure you like and subscribe and maybe pass my video along to someone else that you may know that may be going through the same things so first things first we're going to jump off into the first question is how did I get started with plants Mm, so I remember growing up my mom always used to have pothos plants around in the house particularly in the foyer area of the house um, she always had those all the time and at the time I wasn't when I was younger I wasn't really into it but it was just something that I was always around and I was just accustomed to seeing it all the time as it's something being natural around in the house so I guess maybe that was like the first imprint of me seeing plants and not caring for them because I'm sure I didn't care for them at the time, but that was just my first imprint, something that imprinted on me as a child that I seen that was in our household. Just for example, like, um, what's that? Like incense, my mom uh, burns incense and she's been doing that since we were young in the house. And sometimes she'll get like these small, small ones or she'll get like the really, really long ones and they're kind of thick and she'll burn those in the house. And I now burn those in my house along with some other things. So as far as um, variations of sage and the Palo Santo sticks as well. So it's just certain things that imprint on you and then you expand upon it later once you get out on your own. So that was just something that imprinted on me on how I got started you know, involving myself with plants. My very first plant that I did have that I take, that I had to take care of was a bamboo plant that my mom got me. And this is when I was living with her. I used to keep it on my dresser at the house. Um, do I still have it to this day? No, I don't because I'm sure it probably eventually died. But that was the first plant that I did have was a bamboo plant. And I always kept it on my dresser, always kept it in water, and I've never put it in soil. That's the only way that I know how to particularly care for it, and they do grow really well like that. So whenever I have a bamboo plant, like I have three now, well, one, two, I have four bamboo, bamboo plants right now. So I keep those in water because that's the best way that I know how to keep them alive and keep them flourishing. Some people do put them in soil or they'll keep them in soil, but... I don't know how to care for a bamboo plant that is in soil. So that is something I don't want to try just because I am on a ride of trying not to have any more plants die at all on me. Why do I like plants? I like plants because, I, okay, so I'll start out with this. The question is why do I like plants? I, the kind of plants that I enjoy the most are the ones with the dark leafy greens or just like the green foliage like if uh like for example the jay pothos or a peace lily or you know bird of paradise like that straight green color like those plants like that they catch my eye like no other plant really does and those are the plants that I absolutely I love all my plants but just that green foliage just really really catches my eye a lot I used to have a Chinese evergreen and one day I told it that like <laughs> I didn't say really nice things to it because I told it I didn't really like it that much and like immediately after that it started dying and I don't know why and it probably was because of what I said to it but I mean I love all my plants it's just like that dark leafy green color it's just something that really just sticks out to me but just how like lush and and relaxing it makes me feel and I do like plants because they are a process. They're a process of, you know, basically like trust the whole process type of type of deal. Like you just watch it grow over time and then you just see it flourish. You'll see its likes and its dislikes like a human. But in overall, it's just the amount of years that you have them, they just start to grow over you and you just start taking care of it as if it is a hobby but then like it just becomes like the next thing you have to do when you're doing chores around the house so all in all 
I love plants. I don't just like them, I love them because they're just, I don't know, they just make your house feel great too. And then the secondary off of that, it's just they have so many beneficial properties to your house if you do have certain plants. So and they just add so many touch, like different touches to you. I know there's some, uh, what I'm interested in doing is there are some quizzes that you can take to see what your plant is for you. Um, that's cool. I want to try just to see what it says, but that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have to stick to that, but I'm just interested in what it says. So my my biggest mistakes for caring for plants that i have realized is a few things actually first one first one up is that y'all already know about if you watch my last video is overwatering, and that is a lot of people's mistakes just depending on the temperature in your house and like how much fresh air you get or the humidity or if it's too cold you really have to know your place where you're staying at to know how you need to water your plant and as well the type of pot that they're in so i know for me it took me a little bit of time to try to figure out in this place how i need to water my plants and how frequently because of the air exchange in here um it's not a lot of air exchange and then sometimes it can get very very humid which plants do love the humidity but the soil dries out and then when you do water you could possibly be over watering it as well and it'll be sitting in water so I have tried some methods of bottom watering as well as top soil water, um, watering. Both of the methods do work well, but in all in all, and all, sometimes I may catch myself over watering just because it's like, oh my gosh. Like for example, I'm gonna show you guys my peace lily because I'm so scared to mess this peace lily up because I don't want it to die because it's my second one. I have one that's still recovering from over watering at one point and now i just, just still don't know why it still looks like this but i mean it's getting better it's getting better this peace lily is getting better but i just still don't know why the leaves are curling um i know when peace lilies when they are thirsty the leaves kind of fall over i'm about to show you guys but i just don't know why the leaves are curling and if anybody in this video anyone watching this video if you know why the leaves are curling to my peace lily please let me know i do know the brown tips means that it's been overwatered, but the soil is like super dry right now and i have to water it and when i do water it the leaves still don't curl up but new leaves are coming in so i'm really confused as to what is going on with this peace lily because i just don't know um i mean my assumption is because it's trying to come back to life from being over water at one point and it almost about to die but i just simply don't know um let me show you. now this is when it needs to be watered and this is how I know is because the loot the loose the leaves will drop down to let you know when it is super super thirsty. So my other one, I don't understand what exactly is wrong with it because I will water it, but the leaves still don't unravel from being curled. But this one that I had here, I had this since last year in May, is doing well, and I literally only water it when I see the leaves are starting to droop. And literally the leaves were up last night and then when i woke up this morning it was completely down so this one just got thirsty overnight another big mistake is that certain plants to my understanding do not enjoy terracotta pots transferred two plants into terracotta pots and they've absolutely hated it the first plant i transferred was a zz plant and then the other plant was the dumb, the dumb cane plant these two plants, I probably, I, I'm pretty sure they don't like, they don't like them because immediately as soon as I put them in, in the terracotta pots, that's when they started to go bad. I had the ZZ plant for a good couple of months and it was so healthy. I had it sitting on top of the refrigerator. It was growing and it enjoyed it and loved it. The soil got dried out. It still looked healthy like a snake plant and it was growing. And then all of a sudden, once I transferred it into a terracotta pot, a few weeks later, that's when it just started going kaput. So that is still trying to survive right now. And I'm trying to figure out like what is going on. I think I'm gonna have to put them in smaller nursery pots and 
I'll probably do that just because I just don't understand what is going on. It's so hard to kill a ZZ plant apparently. And I think a few of y'all did not tell me the truth because as soon as I put it in the terracotta pot, it just started going kaput. So that's another mistake. And then the other one was a dumb cane. That one was super healthy. As soon as I put it in the terracotta pot after a few months, like I did with the ZZ plant, it started going kaput. So I just, there's just certain terracotta pots that are just, I guess, not certain types, just terracotta pots that just don't work well with plants. And I think that next time what I'll do before I actually put a plant into a terracotta, which I should have done, is that I will research is, you know, to check to see if this type of plant goes well in the terracotta pot. Next biggest mistake. Well, not biggest mistake, but this is a mistake that I am learning from is right now since my since our place does not get a lot of sunlight I cannot have plants that need that need a bright bright and direct light for example the bird of paradise I mean the bird of paradise is surviving in my house right now and we get medium to very very low indirect light and it's doing well it's just taking a very long time to grow but the downfall with that is that getting all the glow lamps just getting other types of lamps just to get things going which also increases your light bill so just make sure y'all keep that in mind when you're getting your plants that you are keeping in mind that if you don't have a certain amount of light in your house that you're going to need the glow um, grow lamps or you're going to have to get a you know a makeshift like a floodlight lamp with a plant bulb in it i actually have two of those that i do use so just make sure y'all keep that in mind <laughs> if you're buying plants that require a lot of light um just so that they can grow just make sure you keep that in mind for real because your power bill will go up if you have all these bright bright that plants that need bright light in and you have to get 10 million different types of grow lamps and things like that just to keep it going next topic is things that i'm still trying to figure out which also works in conjunction with me with my overwatering um for certain plants um the things i'm still trying to figure out is why my peace lily is still not unraveling every time i look up a why the leaves are browning i'm getting the same answers of overwatering but well, maybe it's because I'm not watering it enough. So that could be a reason as well. So I think maybe I'll try that, but I'm so scared that my pizza is gonna die. So things like that is I'm still working with to try to understand. Um, oh, another, going backtrack, another biggest mistake, um, just to go back to that one, is that if I overwater in here, uh, particularly in this room that I am in, I will have mold start growing on top, but it, but it only happens with my heart leaf philodendron, and I don't understand why that mold will start growing on top of the soil. Once I see the mold growing on top, I'll scoop it off and I'll put fresh soil back on top, but I don't understand why that's happening only with that plant. Um, what I'm still trying to figure out. Um, now, so I had to find out from another hard way of things to figure out is my calathea. Now with calatheas, calatheas are very picky with the type of water that you use to water them. They only like filtered water. They cannot take tap water. Now I've had a few leaves die off because of that reason. So if you have any type of calathea, I have a calathea medallion. Just make sure you are using either like fresh water or filtered water to water that plant because it is very picky and it does not like tap water at all. So make sure that y'all are using good water for that plant. I know y'all like some of y'all probably like, I ain't got time to be buying no filter water or whatever. But if you want, I've done this a few times, go outside when it's raining, sit a bucket outside or a bottle and collect rain water and you're, you can use that to water your calatheas as well as your other plants, which is very preferred. I know a lot of people are so against watering their plants with tap water. Um, I've have done it and I've still do that now. 
I just make sure I fill the bottle up and then I'll use it the next day. So maybe like any of the contaminants or just like anything that's full in the water goes down to the bottom of the, of the bottle that I have. And then I will water my plants with that. So that's a, like a little tip of something that you can do if you have any plants that are picky about the water. But for real, for Calathea, make sure you use filtered water because if not, it's going to tell you immediately the next day that it did not like the water that you gave it. Some things that I have invested in to help along with my plants, which I did tell y'all already was the glow lamps. Um, well, I have one glow lamp and then I have um, a floodlight that I got and then I just put a plant bulb in there just because um, we don't get that much bright and indire indirect light into our home. So I've gotten those two. Um, I did get some hammocks because when I have noticed that the higher that my plants sit up um, towards the ceiling, especially um, pothos, the humidity up there, I guess heat rises if that, if that is still a thing or if that's just something we heard as a kid. But if heat still rises, that humidity up there does help the help the plants grow. And I tend to see that they grow a lot better. I just got my hammocks. My mom got them for me and they're absolutely beautiful. And I'm glad she got me the black because I'm glad that she got me the black because I was so indecisive if I wanted to get a colored one or if I wanted to get black. But they're super, super pretty. And they are very, very easy to install and they just look they just look amazing so i say glow glow lights um or if you want a flood lamp um hammock where hammocks work good um things to invest in if you want a guy if you are you know in a in living somewhere where you have heavy carpet what you can do is get you a tarp or a bin to change the soil if you don't have anywhere to do it so that you're not making a mess in your home I have done that a few times. It's just got a bucket and then empty the plant out in the bucket and then just the old soil stays in there while you're repotting your new one. Something else I invested in. If you have spaghetti jars and if you have bottles that you don't want to toss away, you're more than welcome to save them and to use them for plant holders. If you are handy and if you know how to do this correctly, I know I don't. I know some people have drilled holes inside so that they can actually have their plant being planted inside of a glass, but I don't know how to do that and I'm not doing that. But save your bottles because you can use them to propagate in as well. So that's something that you can invest in if you know you don't recycle, you're now using it to for your own benefit. Um, you can also like, if there's like, if you're not trying to waste your, your cups, um, for example, like I showed you guys in my last video, you can have your cups with, <laughs> this is a button fern. Um, you can use your old cups, and old mugs to house your plants in as well as candle holders. Candle holders work well. Um, I've gotten some ceramic candles or, or glass candles and then just once the wax was done in there, you can just clean that out and then use that as a plant holder. I want to thank y'all so much for watching my video. Please make sure you guys give a thumbs up to my video if you reach the end of the video. I appreciate you for watching. Also, please make sure you subscribe so you can see more of me and my beautiful face. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day.